Hello and welcome to Heritage Contractors. This is episode three. In this episode, we're going to get done with our first harvesting contract. So let's go and have a look at the contracts that are available. We are now in the month of October. This is going to be part one for the month of October. Let's have a look and see. So we've got cultivating, harvesting, plowing. So the plowing is the the good money. So yeah, that'll be one of the ones that we do. Then harvesting, we do want to harvest. So the biggest harvest contract is field seven. So that should give us. It's not a huge amount to start with, but we should get some money in. Yeah, it's not too bad. It'll give us about. 1600 not as good as the plowing but uh, the plowing we can do we can get a work on to that um, we're going to have to use workers quite extensively this month so let's get that one activated and then we've also got field one uh, the, the profit from this one is is higher so yeah we'll get that one done and then a cultivating contract is another good little bit of income so that gives us profit from the harvest of 314 profit 160 so we will go back and do the well we'll try and hopefully it'll still be available but um, I want to get three different types of contracts so I can have a couple of contracts so I can have both both tractors working um, we're going to have to have one of course carting so we're going to be able to do um, well, let's just think uh, we, we'll do the contract the cultivating first yeah and then hopefully that other the second harvest contract is still available yeah, we can only do three contracts at a time. I think I can change that somewhere. I might have to have a look at that at a um, at a later stage. I th I'm pretty sure that I, that we can do more contracts. There's a mod that allows you to do that, but we'll see. Right now we've got three contracts going. Um, we'll get the plowing contract started first of all. So let's head on up to field six and get started. Nice early morning sunshine shining through the through the houses. Lovely lighting on this map as well. Oops, sorry sir. Whoa. <laughs> I think we just killed a pedestrian. Well, we certainly injured him. <laughs> Must be more aware of those type of things. Any event, off we go. Yeah, lovely feeling you get on this map of uh, early morning, the sort of misty conditions. And here we are, field six. Wasn't too far to go. We'll get this started. Get it ready for a worker. Well, we've seen a lot of this in the last two episodes, a lot of plowing. So I think I'll just jump up to the, to the end of the preparation phase of this field where we can get a worker going. We have by the way put our application in for getting paid for the workers that we used in the last episode. That should be coming through pretty soon I would think. In fact there it is there. 210, 270 euros. Nice. Well, let's get a worker going and then we can go and start on 
another one of our contracts. There we go. Pretty good. And they're working. Right, let's go and jump into our harvester. So our first look at the bison. Or bison. Not quite sure how to pronounce it. Should look that up before I start talking about things. Um, right. Squeeze out of here. Right. And I mean squeeze, it's pretty tight. This whole area is pretty tight for the size of this harvester. But that's what this whole map is about, is being tight and compact and having to be careful overall of the type of equipment that you use. Of course we're going to be using vintage equipment, but even with vintage equipment, something this sort of size has a bit of a problem. Right. So we need to get on down to field seven. Go and harvest the sunflower. I'm going to squeeze out of here now. We're going to be squeezing a lot in this in this series, I think, especially when it comes to the harvesting. Oh dear, we don't want to. I think what we've got to do is we've got we've got to find a different place to park that trailer. It's uh, it's okay with the tractors, but even with the tractors, we you know it's getting in the way. We'll find a different place. We'll um, go and put it up in that top shed, I think, somewhere. Not quite sure when we'll do it, but uh, it will get done at some stage. Right, let's have a look and see how we're we going to go. Oh, no, I don't think it's wise to go that way. Um, trying to think now. Yeah, I don't think I don't think with the harvester it's wise to go this way. No, no, I'm not going to give it a go. I know I can get out there because I have tested it, but it's really, really tight and we don't have to go, go through that stress. <laughs> we'll just drive around. Another good thing about this map makes you think about how you're going to get to places. And of course it's such a beautiful map that it's just a pleasure to drive around. And that's why I'm showing quite a bit of it now in the sort of early episodes so that you can get a feel for the map as well. I've still got the uh, sat nav on down in the bottom corner. So I think if we go left down here we should hit the field pretty much head on. Yeah, if we'd gone the other way, the way that we originally wanted to get, we would have got there pretty quickly. But I mean, it hasn't taken a, a huge amount of time to get through here, and we haven't had to drive over people <laughs> like we did earlier on. Oh dear. Right. Nice, decent sized cornfield. Let's find a place to start. Doesn't have a working top speed this uh, this harvester. I think it's about 12 miles an hour, but it'll be okay. Well, we can get around. As I said, it's not a huge huge map, so we'll get around quite easily. All right, let's start our first harvesting contract. Sunflowers to be delivered to the. basically the grain mill. Uh, 
Right, with this harvester it's just that much easier to do it in first person. Gives you a great effect of... Basically because it's got no cab you can, you can just see exactly how it's working. Sometimes the cabs get in the way in the first person of um, the more modern combine harvesters in particular and tractors because all you can really see is the inside of the cab and the general well, well I don't suppose you can say the general direction that you're going in you can you can see quite a bit but with this you can it just gives you a beautiful picture of the of the actual harvesting right close to the river so we need to be careful when we're turning around here not going to be a huge amount of space for this first turn the interesting thing about um, this while we're in first um, in first person view is if you look at the little knob on the steering wheel we'll get back to it once we see it again we just clipped the tree there. Oh, luckily the brakes are still pretty good on this old, this old girl. Well, this old machine. Let's not be sexist, yeah. Right. I think we're about in position to do this, this run, or this pass. Here we go. It just shows how close we are. There you go, let's get going. Fantastic. Get back into the first person view. Yeah, so as I was saying, so the little white knob that you've got there on the steering wheel. Vitally important in these type of um, vehicles, rear wheel, rear, rear wheel drive vehicles. Um, I was always taught, especially when I was driving JCBs, uh, with uh, rear rear wheel steering that uh, most important to get the to use the knob for steering because it can kick especially with the rear wheel drive it can kick you through the steering wheel basically people have been known to break thumbs when holding onto the steering wheels especially if you've got your thumb sort of spread on the inside of the of the steering wheel so that's what it's there for it's not just for ease of turning course it does make it much easier that we're on one of the first uh, power steering vehicles so that makes a big big difference I'm sure you've noticed that I've put this on to a to a bit of a time-lapse We will be using, I think I did mention, uh, quite a few time lapses. Right, let's go and pick up the trailer. I think it's in this end. Well, I think this is where our silo is. Yep, there's the trailer, the old wooden trailer. Doesn't have a huge capacity, about 3,000 litres. But then again, the Massey Ferguson doesn't have a huge amount of horsepower. beautiful looking machine that it is. Let's get this hooked up and then we can uh, get down and take our first load into the... I've forgotten what it's called now. Is it called the Lundus... something like that. Lundus Bach. Lundus something. Uh, but basically it's the grain mill. <laughs> uh, Left or right? Left or right? Um, we go left and once again, left or right? Yeah, I'm not sure this is the right way. Uh, it's not, it's not. We should have gone, we should have gone right there. And we did put a worker onto our 
combine and I see is just full so I think we've got to do a bit of a UE here. Uh, use the area. Hopefully there's no traffic coming through. Nice little UE. And we'll go back up. And I think we should just be outside town as we go to the top here. As you can see, I'm still finding my way around town. <laughs> yeah, there it is there. Right in front of us. It's full, so we'll go and get him. We'll leave the work on and we'll... So I don't think... I think the uh, capacity of the of the harvester is around about the capacity of this um, of this trailer, maybe slightly more. We'll definitely get a full trailer load every time. We need to, um, well, every time the harvest is full, we'll try and do. Well, I'm not sure whether we'll be able to do any chasing here. Right, so where are we going to? So we need to go to the land market. Land market. Land market. So there we go. It's just up the drag here. I think we're heading in the wrong direction. Here we go up that road and turn left. We should be there. See the workers missed a little bit of... But we're getting volunteer workers. So they're not... Um, particularly skilled at um, at driving the equipment you know we have given them instruction but um, we will have to do a little bit of tidying up here and there oh, the uh, the messy doesn't like the load too much although it does need a bit of a service I think we're about to get through this There we go. Should be just around the corner. I just stopped there to put the mark on just to make sure that I'm delivering to the right place. Always a bit paranoid about that <laughs> when I do contract. Uh, I have in the past been known to deliver to the wrong the wrong place, which has just messed the whole contract up. Get this all floated and that's our first. Harvest load delivered. Well, in the process of being delivered. Wonder how much it's going to be of the contract. Should be quite big. It's not a big field. 51%. Yeah. So let's get another load. Head on back down to the to the field. In general, the Messi just doesn't like the trailer by the looks of things. I'm sure it should be doing more than nine miles an hour. Well, maybe it is just a slow tractor. Well, in any case, we've got we've had to put the bigger horsepower tractor on the ploughing, which is which is underway at the same time. So, yeah, it's not that far to go to the. To the delivery point and we're just going to have to get used to it there's going to be you know we're going to be using slow equipment boy what are you doing boy driving straight off the road not concentrating again think about your driving luckily there was nobody walking on the pavement this time do we have another full load 
not quite. Whoa, what's happening there? He's going off at a bit of a tangent. Is he waiting for me to come and pick up? Let's have a look and see. Oh, he's completely confused. There's no, he's putting it out. Where's he going? Whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop! 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 Come on, stop! Wait! Break! 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 Oh dear! What's happening there? My goodness! Panic driver! Oh! I managed to jump onto the... Well, you could just as it touched the tree. Wow. Well, I'm not sure what happened to the driver there. Well, he's pretty shaken up. I think he just got confused when we were trying to offload, um, offload the hopper. But wow, that was a bit interesting. Thank goodness, not too much damage done. We'll take over the rest of the contract ourselves from here on in. Let's get this filled up. Whew. Bit out of breath after that. Nothing like running after a runaway harvester. Shit. Oh. In any case, let's go and get this delivered. Will, will this complete the contract? Not quite sure. We had 51 with the last load. So technically this should complete it. Same amount. 97% transported. Did we not have a full load there? Maybe not. Maybe we didn't have a full load. Actually we didn't have a full load. So I've just taken a little bit out because there would be some that'll be for our own account. So I've tried to be a little bit clever here and uh, I looked on the on the contract sheet and it said we needed still to deliver another 100 litres. So I've got just over 100 litres in here. Let's see if this works. then we can uh, put the balance into our into our silo and sell it when the price is good not sure whether that's really a worthwhile exercise with the size of the equipment well yeah with the size of the equipment with the size of the contracts and the size of the fields so I don't think we'll have huge Oh, 99. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to scrap that idea for now. Unless we've got a really, really big field, and um, it's quite obvious that we that we can take a load back to our silos and check out the pricing. Yeah, it says nothing to go. So, in any case, I'm not going to for for the for the for the, for the amounts that. We would be storing, I'm not going to do it. Just jump over into the a quick check on the the other worker, still doing quite well on the on the ploughing. Right, we're gonna do we're gonna finish this field off ourselves. There's bits and pieces all over the place, the 
at work who did not cover themselves in glory, to be honest. But as I said, you know, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to volunteer workers. Maybe just have to do a slight, slightly more training of our, of our volunteers. Make sure that they're capable, especially of the big equipment, the harvesters. I suppose they didn't really do a really good job about preparing the field because it is so, so close to the to the river. Should have thought of that, but in any case, it's been done. No real harm done. It's not, it's, not, <laughs> it's not huge amounts going into the hopper, is it? But we've got to clear it all. As I said with the contracts, we're going to make sure that we've got... that we're doing proper jobs. We don't want to leave too much on the field. And occasionally there might be a little tufty arrow there that it's not really worth going to go back and collect in terms of in terms of spending the diesel and uh, and such like just about done got this we'll pick up that little tuft over there and then we've got that bottom corner to do and then we'll go and complete the contract we'll go and deliver the one percent and take a bit of profit I think particularly now that we are um, pr still pretty short of funds we need to take the money whenever we can get the cash flow going maybe buy another piece of land See if there's any any vintage equipment comes up in the in the sales. Not sure that it would, but uh, can always have a look. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's only about two hundred or three, maybe three hundred liters still need to be delivered. A bit of a waste that last little delivery up to. But then we've got to try these things out. We've got to have a look and see how things work for us. Think things through a little bit sometimes. Yeah, couldn't really expect the inexperienced worker to to deal with this little corner. I should have de dealt with it myself to start with. I need to think about these things a little bit more carefully as we go along. Bearing in mind we're not using very skilled workers. Right, let's go and pop this into the trailer and, uh, and get it delivered. like that little hill <laughs> two miles an hour going up there uh, keep making comments over it but then uh, I keep having to realize that you know we're using old equipment it's not going to speed around the place but it's doing a job and the nice thing about this museum is that we're using the equipment to actually fund the museum. I mean, of course, we've had a bit of a start, but we are using the, the equipment to, yeah, buy more equipment, buy land, um, build up the, um, 
build up the museum. Yeah, we just just jump cut that, but I did take the combine back to the back to the farm. But right now we want to see about getting this delivered. Yeah, I mean, even with 200 liters, it's still only doing 9 miles an hour, so that must be the speed that it does. Maybe it's because the um, needs of servicing could be. We'll see, but... We're only just around the corner to finish off this contract, and that'll be our first harvest contract done. So we've still got the... Uh, the other contracts to finish off and we'll do that in part two of October which will be the next episode there we go yeah didn't make a huge amount 380 odd euros still not to be scoffed at as they say but I think that's where we're going to end this episode. I do hope you've been enjoyed it, and I do hope you're enjoying this series. Let's just get ourselves paid for this. So there's another 1,600, or another 1,056 to come. So we've made about 1,600. Well, turnover of 1,600. It's cost us a little bit of diesel. But it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. There we go. Well, once again, thank you for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please like and subscribe. It does help us out. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio!